Well, hi everyone, I'm Andy Asher. I'm editor at Bloomer Boomer. Now, I don't want to make this sound bigger than it is, but what we are talking about today is no denying that some amazing discoveries are being made in the diagnosis and in the treatment of Alzheimer's. Now, let me put this into perspective. We hear that there is no cure for Alzheimer's, but one company is developing a pill for people who are susceptible, a pill. Now that in itself is amazing. And now we learn that by just wearing an Apple Watch with the help of Ancestry website 23 and me, for example, researchers are making some incredible discoveries. And today we're talking to one person who is on the pinnacle of these breakthroughs. He is Dr. Martin Toller. Thank you, doctor, so much for joining us today. Pleasure to be here, Andy. Well, um, you know, I admit that I do get overly excited when I hear about big discoveries like this, and I can't even imagine what it would mean for all of us if a pill was developed to treat Alzheimer's. Now, is this as big as I seem to think it is? So the, the, the tragedy, one of the tragedies of Alzheimer's is that for almost 20 years, we were not able to uh, develop a treatment, effective treatment. And, and but the, the, what we have learned enormous amount of information and understand the science, understand the biology of the disease. And what really where we are right now that we have a clear path forward. Um, the, the problem is that, you know, in the, in the past 20 years, most of the programs that have been under development have, have gone away. So there's very little in the remaining pipeline. And, but, and we're one of those that have a chance to be a drug in the next few years. Oh, that's but again, so we're exciting. Able to, yeah, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, no. And then there's the stuff about what's being done by Apple and studying whether data from iPhones and Apple Watches can detect signs of dementia. That sounds to me as a as a game changer. What's with that? So uh, we need to improve the way we find the patients and especially to find the patients early. So if we can find the patients early, we can intervene early because our approach can slow and potentially stop the progression of the disease. Uh, but it cannot reverse it. So that's why the, the Apple Watch and, and all the technology that can help us diagnose the patients early is so important. Well, well I, uh, so let me get to your company, Alzion. I, I was poking around, uh, I was poking around the, uh, the site through your Alzion website and it's super technical. <laughs> so tell me, what is, what is Alzion? So we're, we're a biotechnology company. We were founded about six years ago. Uh, and we're a group of people who have worked on Alzheimer's disease for over 20 years. Uh, each of us has about a decade experience in big pharma and then another decade in, in the biotechnology. And we, were, we, we decided to, to try to simplify the problem of solving the puzzle of Alzheimer's uh, by focusing on very high risk patients based on their genetic background. So we, we, we focus on those patients and that really allowed us to uh, understand what is the toxin that's causing the disease? How can we prevent it from forming? How can we get the treatment in the right place, which is in the brain, which is not simple actually to get the drug at the right concentration in the brain? And what are the right patients that we need to treat? Oh, fascinating. You know, I think most everyone ha has known someone with Alzheimer's, so to hear what you're doing seems almost too amazing. And it sounds like there is hope. Uh, would you say so? Absolutely. And I think that's, that's very important for people to hear because the Alzheimer's is becoming such a huge problem for the society, for so many millions of patients and the families. And what we have been hearing for almost 20 years is just this failed, this failed, this failed, these big companies, these huge programs everything has been failing. So uh, what people don't hear and what I want to make sure everybody remembers mm -hmm. is that we have learned enormous amount mm -hmm. how to treat, when to treat, who to treat, what is the right approach, what, why the previous treatment has fa have failed. We are able to apply it to our research and to our development and that really brought us to the forefront of the, of the, of the effort and that's why we're now the front runner, potential front runner uh, and potentially one of the first drugs to be approved. We're starting our phase three and we hope that we can actually uh, bring a drug to patients in the next four to five years. Wow. Well, something that I uh, ask all my guests is if there is a, a, a backstory that explains your interest in finding treatments and a possible cure, and you have traveled a pretty remarkable road. Tell us about 
how you came to, to what you're doing today. So um, my story is I'm originally from Prague, the computer science and medicine there, and then came to the US for doing the decade of the brain. That's what uh, Ronald Reagan uh, de uh, de declared. And, and, and did my PhD working on, on cognition and then on, on Alzheimer's. Uh, I trained in neurology in Boston, went to Yale, was there on faculty. And for me, really how I got to what I'm doing is I became incredibly frustrated uh, by the lack of treatment. Because I've been seeing the patients, seeing the families, we couldn't do anything, you know, you see them and say, there's nothing I can do, I'll see you in a half a year. So that, that was the reason why I initially went to Pfizer. Uh, where I worked on both on the clinical development on, on the different programs and then uh, ran the business development group, uh, which is the group that buys companies and, and does deals actually with, with other companies um, and, and, and then into biotech. So that's really, I mean, for me, really, as a neurologist, as a clinician, it's been incredibly frustrating uh, the fact that we don't have treatments for these disorders. And it was clear that we need to understand much better how to go about it and then the, really the, there's a scientific, there has to be a scientific solution first. For and, sure. And this is where we made a breakthrough at Alzheimer's. Yeah. Now, so it, it might be four to five years before someone can go down to their Walgreens pharmacy and pick up uh, their prescription. Exactly. That's exactly right. But again, Andy, I mean, the, 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 the tragedy is that there were, you know, tens of billions of dollars spent in the development and there's nothing to show for it. There's, oh there's, so, there's, there's just a handful of programs that are in the late stage development and, and, you know, but, you know, dozens and dozens of them went away. I guess I have to ask you, uh, will we see a cure? So uh, I'll backtrack a little bit. So the problem of neurodegeneration is a problem of clearance uh, of, of uh, toxic proteins from the brain. Uh, so. Our brains burn about 20% of the energy of the body, even if we sleep, and we need to clear uh, almost three pounds of junk of these toxins every year. As we get older, we are not as able to clear it, primarily because of our vessels are just not as functional, and, and the, the proteins get trapped in the brain. Now, what it leads to is these disorders like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ALS, and so forth. So our approach and our technology is improving clearance of these proteins from the brain. So are we going to find a cure? We can potentially, with a drug like ourselves, which is a pill, uh, prevent the onset of the disease. If you call that cure, I mean, that, that is as the closest as it can be. It's going to be very similar to how we treat cardiovascular disease. We see people in their 40s and 50s. The biggest risk for Alzheimer's, as is for other disorders, is age. Um, and and we, we say, you know, this is your family history, this is your age, this is your genetic risk factors, and these are some of the biomarkers, and you need to be treated now or in 10 years and what have you, and these are the interventions we can make. Because my uh, belief is that we will be able to prevent Alzheimer's. That's, um, that's, that's, a, 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 that's coming a long way, that's coming a long way. Um, and again, to go off track maybe a little bit, because I did uh, read that, uh, you know, your background, you you led the uh, Velvet Revolution that toppled the uh, communist regime in the former Czechoslovakia back in November of 1989. Wounded, one presumably dead. The communist regime in Czechoslovakia was drawing to a close. Now that in itself is truly amazing. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, we, we were, you know, the, the world has been changing. And, and again, Ronald Dragon did the right thing when he uh, when he decided to go against the evil empire against the Russians, and and you know then the Russians uh, decided not to intervene, and we were the students, we were the catalyst, went to the streets and 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 you know changed the country, and and the communists gave it up, and then we ran it for a little bit. So that was incredible. But yeah, I mean that that were the young years, the twenties. Fascinating. Well, now, so if there's one thing that uh, that we could achieve today, in, in, in this little interview we're doing, what would that be? You know, again, I think it was very important for everybody out there because there are millions of Americans and, and their families who are suffering from the disease or are afraid of it or somebody they know uh, has the disease. It's just the message of hope. I mean, we truly, the science, and I've been in the space now for over 20 years, I mean, has developed to the point where we know what to do. The problem, it takes about a decade from where you know what to do to, to get it into the studies that we have, for instance, right? So there's 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 bound to be a gap uh, before we have 
many, many, many different treatments because it just, again, takes that long and it's so expensive. But there is, we understand what to do. There are a few treatments that have a, I think, good chance of being a, a, a treatment, uh, being a, you know something that the patients can actually get in the next uh, four to five years. And, and that's really what people should remember. Not just listen to the headlines and see the headlines because the, the, the failures were just one after another. But again, the important things that what we have learned from that, and that we now know where to go and what to do. And I guess your company is doing research that is a parallel to, to cancer research in ways. I mean, our inspiration in a lot of ways has been from cancer drug development, where you really want to focus on the very high risk patients, right? I mean, in, 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 even when we started Alzheon, uh, um, people were trying to treat Alzheimer's as to have a cure for everybody. It doesn't work that way. It's like if you would say, I'm going to have a silver bullet for all the cancers. It just doesn't work that way. In fact, we don't even treat the different tissues in, in a cancer. We treat the specific mutations in those, in those different forms of cancer. Now, and the same approach, which is called precision medicine, we apply to neurodegeneration because what we now know, which we did not know even you know, five, six years ago, is that there are a number of different proteins that can cause damage in the brain and lead to different disorders. And you need to treat those specific bad proteins, bad agents, you know, toxins. So that's really where we got inspired. And now it makes a lot of sense, but it was, you know, not, not as obvious, obviously, um, you know, uh, six years ago. So uh, what you're doing now in terms of letting everybody know about it is, is, is for information and uh, hopefully in uh, five years, your name will be associated, uh, your company's name will be associated with, with that pill. Is that your, your goal at the moment? Right now, I mean, we did not realize, and I did not realize um, um, until really recently, especially with the, with the very limited field for potential therapeutics, how important it is it's to talk to the public, like talking to you, Andy. I mean, it's really just to explain where are we with the science, you know, where are we with the development, what can we do? How how we're moving things along, and and there's a huge you know public policy and policy and and it's just public you know a role for anybody who's working in this space because you have to realize that vast majority of the uh, of the players of the big pharma or even the biotechs have gone away because they had you know negative uh, programs and and decided not not to pursue it any further. So so I think for the few of us that are left. We really need to tell people again. There's hope. We know what to do. We're working on it, and and um, you know, fingers crossed, we will have a uh, we will have an effective treatment that can change the uh, the course of the disease, slow it or stop it within the next you know four to five years. And tell me if this is even a, a, appropriate or not. Are you? Uh, do you seek investors uh, or how? You know, we always, and it's a very good question, right? So obviously, for many people who normally invest in, in, in drug development, being in the big pharmas, the Wall Street, even the VC venture capital, they had been through the, these 20 years and many of them invested a lot of money. So it's, it's been challenging for them. So we are always looking for people who can support us. You know, the, uh, historically we were, we have institutional investors, but we were most successful with people who personally care about the disease. Um, so if there's anybody who wants to work with us, help us, you know, with what we're doing, we'll be delighted. Um, we always, uh, you know, seek supporters. Again, this is such a huge problem. I mean, I think this, you know, as a society, we're facing two things, the global warming and, and Alzheimer's. It can really derail a lot of things that we're, we're doing. And, 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 and we really need to come together around this issue and, and this topic. And, and again, support the, 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 the few of the remaining players that actually can make a difference. So. Uh... Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Toller. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, Andy. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. That's uh, Dr. Martin Toller, President and CEO of Alzion. And this is a wrap for today. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. So long.